Avengers, assemble! Y'all remember this? In 2008, Marvel and Lionsgate dared to ask the question, what if the Avengers actually had sex? What the hell? Oh my god! Welcome back to In Commentary, where I talk about whatever I want to talk about and you can't stop me. And today we're diving right back into Marvel and Lionsgate's Marvel Animated Features series. And this time, we might have just reached one of, if not the best film in the series, maybe? The entire premise of this film is original, as in it does take from the comics a bit, but this isn't some adaptation. It creates original characters, like Torin and James Rogers. By the way, James Rogers? Oh man, like this shit is what led me to shipping Steve and Nat and Winter Soldier a bit, I was like, damn, are they gonna get together? Like they did in the Ultimate Avengers movies, so they're gonna do this again, right? It didn't happen, but that didn't stop me from thinking they were eventually gonna happen later. And then Black Widow ended up with the Hulk, huh? and that's... That's a whole other video. Also, it's not that insane that I thought that they were gonna get together because a lot that happens in these movies ends up happening in the MCU later. So I think what I thought was warranted. Now, this movie does a lot of unique stuff and I respect the hell out of it because it's kind of like playing in the Marvel sandbox and just doing whatever you want. And it honestly leads to some very fun, engaging moments and emotional ones too. This is the movie I very much vividly remember replaying over and over. This one and Hulk vs. Wolverine were my jam. And let me just say, re-watching it, it holds up pretty damn well. Though of course I do have my gripes with it. Let's just say in a list with Doctor Strange and Invincible Iron Man, this is definitely in the Doctor Strange range. That rhymed. Whoa! <laughs> Bars. Enough talk. Let's watch this thing. The movie begins with Tony Stark, voiced by the incredible Tom Kane, telling a story to these kids. The story of the Avengers. How they were Earth's mightiest heroes, how they married and had children, and how they eventually fell to Ultron, with their children being kept safe away from the machine. Now that's just a super dark children's story, but the best part is that the kids are like, Yo! Tony! Tell it again! Can we hear it again? Tell me again how my parents died, let's go! It's really funny. That being said, it catches the viewer up to speed and immediately poses the threat of Ultron. Now, let me just say this movie has peak Ultron. I don't know about you, but I was never really a fan of Whedon's sassy Ultron. Like, I get it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I want cold, emotionless, brutal Ultron. Making a character funny isn't the issue, but giving a character a sense of humor inherently humanizes the character. And I think humanizing is the last thing you want to do to Ultron, unless it's like a big twist at the end that his end goal is something very human. Which makes Ultron's entire existence kinda ironic. Like, emotionless killing machine is driven by emotion, you know? Anyways, this is peak Ultron to me, and you'll see later how genuinely scary this character is. So the children are James Rogers, Captain America and Black Widow's son, Torin, Thor and Sif's daughter, Henry Pym, son of Giant Man and the Wasp, and Azari, son of Black Panther and Storm. Probably the coolest looking character in, in this whole thing. The movie then flashes forward 12 years and gives these slice of life sequences. The children are vibing and we get to meet them and understand their abilities. A fun quirk they gave Torin is that she was raised on Earth, you know, but she speaks in Old English to feel closer to her father. I know thee to be real, father. Sometimes she forgets and like slips back into just straight up like regular speaking and it's it's really funny. I really like that. The point is to not be such a jerk. Do you think as guardians really say jerk? Mm -hmm. There's lots of little things this movie does to endear us to these characters except one fucking character and that's Pim. Fuck you, Pim. Pim is so, so annoying. annoying. He's not that annoying, but like he he's the youngest character and He's just kind of whiny, and it really gets on my nerves. No fair, Azari! You didn't give me enough of a head start! Also, for some reason, they decided to make him a boy, when in the concept art, it was clearly supposed to be a girl, and they just changed it last minute. I don't know why they did that. That makes Torin the only girl in the Avengers. It feels like a boys club for, like, the whole movie, and it's like, yeah, maybe, maybe throw in another girl. Just to, like, change it up a little bit. Anyways, I'm not a fan of Pym. I tolerate him the whole movie. Did you guys know that the fountain was a secret door? 
because I didn't, and I'm way smarter than all of you. What's interesting though is that James is kind of annoying too. As in, the dude is this reluctant hero, right? And we find out later that he is a good guy. He's just all depresso espresso, you know? Like at the start, the vibe he gives off is like, He's one bad day away from like just making fun of everyone's dead parents, despite the fact that his parents are dead too. Holy shit, okay, I, I just, <laughs> I just re-watched that bit of the movie just to see like how this interaction plays out. He actually insults their parents being dead and is like, Torin, your dad just doesn't fucking love you. Oh right, sorry, there's no point for us because our parents are dead. Your dad just abandoned you, so there's still hope. That's awesome. I can't, I can't believe they actually did that though. I wrote that in like, that's the vibe he gives off. But the dude straight up is like, fuck you and your parents, <laughs> holy shit. So the plot really gets moving once the vision appears and freaks everyone out. Tony takes the vision to his man cave and tell the kids to fuck off. But of course, they secretly follow. One thing I really enjoy about this movie is that not everyone is like always on the same page. They disagree and bicker, but will still work together. They dead ass just go against authority figures like half the movie. And it's just really entertaining, you know? It keeps things fun. And like as a kid watching this movie, I'm like, yeah. Fuck what the adults say, I'm gonna do my own thing. Sadly though, James should not have done his own thing along with the rest of his siblings because they straight up activate just like all the Ultron bots and alert Ultron of their location. Let me show you Ultron's first appearance. Energy source detection. Location, Arctic Circle. Energy analysis mental fugitive designation, Iron Man. Finally. That is the coldest shit I've ever seen. Like that, that's the Ultron I love. No emotion, just cold as hell. So, so cool. So Ultron reprograms the Iron Avengers and crashes into the Avengers Refuge, which is basically like this big dome in the Arctic, and catches everyone by surprise. So the kids escape with the vision on the Quinjet. Meanwhile, Iron Man suits up and takes on Ultron. Now two things. First, the kids have only heard of these stories, but there's never been visuals. So when we discover things with them, it genuinely feels really cool. Something as simple as Iron Man suiting up is made 10 times cooler considering that they've not only never seen Iron Man, but didn't know it was Tony who wore the suit. Now the cooler part is that this movie definitely works as the end of the Marvel animated universe, kind of. The composer of this film is the same composer as prior films in the series, and he reuses pretty much all the musical cues, which means that when we see the Avengers, we hear the Avengers. Not only that, but the Avengers roster consists of these characters that we've seen in prior movies, Ultimate Avengers 1 and 2. Like Captain America ends up with Black Widow, and now you find out they have a son. It's pretty much a direct continuation of the story. The only issue is that, well, Giant Man dies in Ultimate Avengers 2, which is the only thing that messes things up. That being said though, spiritually, this works as a finale. And trust me when I tell you, the musical cues really hit at a certain point in the story. Now, the second thing I wanted to say is, holy fuck, the visuals of this movie are insane. Is it groundbreaking? No, it's not, but it's really, really, really good. There's parts of this movie where the visuals just go crazy stupid for no reason, and this is probably the highlight of the film in that regard. This fight scene, I mean. Just incredibly contrasted coloring, very intense highlights, and pure black shading, which really makes everything pop in this really satisfying way. Someone cooked here. Also, the tone instantly changes when Ultron arrives because, you know, when they're in this dome, it's like bright and has like a nice sky and everything. Ultron crashes through, the dome shuts off. We see now what the sky actually looks like. It's all gray and it's all like fucking stormy. And then like the alarms go off. So everything has this red glow. Fucking terrifying. It's awesome. We stand till death. Anyways, I can't reiterate enough. The action sequence is so cool but Tony loses cause of course he does. And the Vision takes the kids on the Quinjet to the Savage Land. I have set a course for the Savage Land. The Savage Land? That sounds horrible! The movie mentions Jocasta, the Savage Land, uh, the Quinjet's how they get around, and stuff like this may seem obvious and like no duh in a post-MCU world, but 
prior to that, before that, you know, stuff like this was really cool. I forgot to mention, make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, it's Brown Table's original animated series. Uh, this is a display of the show, you can get it at Displate, uh, the link is in the description for Brown Table's Displate store. These are the protagonists, Hope Griffin and Itsuki Reo, and uh, you can check out their adventures by watching the show. Thanks so much for uh, catching up on it. There's three episodes out now. Anyways, these kids are like, fuck the Savage Land, fuck Authority, fuck you, Vision, and they kill him. They shut him off and he dies. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? I'm joking. That would be crazy. crazy no, the vision just turns off because he is like in power reserve mode or something like his batteries depleted. So the kids decide to go to Ultra City, which is basically New York City, but it's renamed because of Ultron. They go there because they want to rescue Tony. But here's the big thing. We have this whole action sequence with Iron Man and Ultron, as you know, but the kids haven't actually fought anything. And so they come into the city with this very confident attitude, especially Torin, who's like, all right, back away, boys. I'm fucking invincible, and I'm like a god. I am immortal and invulnerable. Ultron holds no fear for me. For Asgard! Two seconds later, she gets absolutely destroyed. Oh my god! What is that? And it's very cool to see these characters experience the dangers of the real world after being housed and being safe for so long. Like they have this already pre-existing notion of how powerful they are and how sick they are, but no, they're they're pretty they're pretty new to all this. And this is especially good for Torin's character as she's always going on about how she's the daughter of Thor, and she presents herself in a larger than life way. Ironically, she's saved by the one character that has no superpowers, the son of Hawkeye. Look at little Hawkeye Junior. Gonna cry. Now Hawkeye leads this little band of survivors in Ultra City, and they're like, yeah, a 13-year-old can lead us. I'm assuming they're like between the ages of 12 and 15. They are not older than 15. So it, it's genuine, it like kind of caught me off guard that it's like a child, like a genuine child. Not like, oh, this is kind of like a young adult at this rate. No, this is like a child. A child is leading uh, these survivors. And they're like, yes, sir. We will follow your orders, uh, 10 year old. Hoorah! It's very funny. Besides that, what's cool is that we find out that the original leader of these scavengers was Clint Barton, the original Hawkeye. He was one of the few surviving members of the Avengers until he was, you know, finally killed. And I love how everyone just always agrees that Clint Barton can fucking survive anything. He's just got a bow and arrow and straight up for some reason, the dude survives in every like post-apocalyptic Marvel story. Like he is always there. It's actually kind of awesome. He is constructed alternatively. Anyways, the Kid Avengers are rescued. They meet Francis Barton, Clint Barton's son, who by the way, just immediately flirts with Torin. Stay safe, beautiful. He's got Riz to the max, and they go on their way to rescue Tony to the dismay of Francis. Francis Barton, Hawkeye. Just, I'm just reiterating Francis, because Francis is such a, such a name that I don't know if anyone will associate that with Hawkeye. Yes, Francis. Francis is Hawkeye, I'm gonna stop now. So before we get to this really big scene that I really enjoy, I wanna talk about how cool these characters are becoming. Like I said, they're essentially family. They bicker like one, but they also work together. And when they work together, the movie really shines. And we find out slowly that James is actually a solid leader. Thing is, he's just disinterested in training and making an effort in strengthening their relationships because he feels like his life is just going in circles and maybe a part of him feels no connection to his father but he does long for one. You can tell he cares because when he sees his robot dad, he's like, stop, dad, stop. Dad, can you hear me? And it's like, oh, you, you called the robot dad. Daddy? Do I look? So he has wants, but he has to let go of the past and focus on the future, which is the point of this upcoming scene. Now they reach Ultron's trophy room. This scene is crazy because you see that they, Ultron straight up killed everybody. Like, it's not just the Avengers, it's like, you can see Falcon's wings, like, it's like every superhero involved ever is dead. The saddest thing ever is that they play Captain America's theme when we see his trophy case. I love that theme. I love it as much, maybe more, than the MCU's Captain America theme. And hearing it, when we see 
the fucked up Captain America mask and shield. In the trophy case, I will cry. I'm going to cry. They find Tony out of nowhere. They straight up just crossfade and they find him. Very anticlimactic, but whatever. They walk into Ultron's trap, but thankfully Francis has a change of heart and saves everyone along with his group of scavengers. So the cast successfully escapes the city and Tony eventually reveals he created Ultron. I created Ultron to be a force for peace, for law and order. Another thing that the MCU took from these series of movies. Peace in our time. And as we all know, with so many movies having this happen, and with people that worked on these movies working on the MCU projects, it's no longer really a coincidence. It's very much probable that the MCU was hyper-inspired by these animated movies. Anyways, Tony created Ultron and it led to everyone dying until Betty Ross, yep, I'm telling you, spiritually an Ultimate Avengers sequel. She appears and is like, yeah, the Hulk's alive, he's just fucking around in the desert. The Hulk survived too. Where? Where he always goes, the desert. And so of course, everyone's like, who's the Hulk? And he's like, you yeah, guys, he's the strongest man alive. I don't know who would have that accent. Gabagool. I'm tired. And they're like, if he's the strongest guy alive, why hasn't he fought Ultron yet? Is the Hulk strong enough to defeat Ultron? And so that's what they do. They're gonna go to the desert, find Bruce Banner, and have him destroy Ultron. And so they locate the Hulk, and honestly, I, I fucking envy this dude. He is just chilling in the desert, in this cave, growing, like, his plants. He's got, like, a little garden going on. Like, dude, you are so chill. I, I want, I want a vibe. I want a vibe with you. Please, for your own sakes, you have to get away from me. Bruce, it's me. It's- Get out of here, Stark! Actually, never mind. Oh, oh, and I forgot. Oh my god. He still simps for Betty Ross. I think the one thing that will always happen with the Hulk is that he will always simp for Betty Ross. As he should, though. She kinda bad. And at this point, James has not only recognized the events of the past, but he's recognized how important they are. Like, they, as the Avengers' children, are. Like, they've been told stories of who their parents are and who they're meant to be, but he never took it seriously because, I mean, it never felt serious. He has no real visual connection to any of these stories, so once he recognizes what happened and how it's affected not only the people he loves, but the world, he goes sicko mode. And by sicko mode, I mean he gets his shit together. We owe it to our parents. We're all that's left of their legacy. So, they devise a plan to make Bruce Hulk out because he's been suppressing his Hulk side because they need the Hulk to defeat Ultron. But before they can do that, knowing Ultron can track technology, they activate a ship so Ultron can triangulate their location. Oh shit, and I forgot, really, really cool part of the movie. Torin loses her sword in Ultra City. So she's powerless for the entire second act of the movie. She has an immense amount of faith in her father and her culture, and after talking to the sky to no avail, the whole movie, she does it one more time, at her lowest moment, calls for help from her father, and her sword? fucking flies out and travels all the way from Ultra City and crashes down right in front of her. The sickest shit ever. So cool. So, so cool. So the Iron Avengers locate the heroes and a huge fight begins and it's very well done. Like, look at this shit. Thor just chucks Torin, and she can fly. So she straight up just floats in the air and then flies back up. It's wicked. Now, how the fight is handled is that the heroes fight their respective parents. That's cool. It's very symbolic. It is also fucking insane. I want to smoke whatever these writers were smoking because that's cool, but it's also like, Jesus Christ, because it's very cool. It's very symbolic, like Captain America has to beat Captain America. At the same time, it's like, ah, my first big supervillain. I'm gonna go fucking kill my mom. But like, I love it, but it's like fucked up a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, these kids need to go to therapy. Also, hear me out. The Iron Avengers, the coolest thing. Black Panther can actually turn into a panther. So cool. Again, spiritual successor to the Ultimates. And as this battle is happening, James tells Pym to get to Banner and make him Hulk out, which he does. And here comes Hulk ex Machina. The Hulk in this movie is awesome. Only issue, he's too awesome. He's too OP. So the Hulk destroys a couple of the Iron Avengers, which is kind of a bummer, and then takes on Ultron alone. Ultron is friggin' insanely powerful. Him and the Hulk are duking it out, and he's kind of kicking the Hulk's ass, so the next Avengers are fighting their parents as this is happening. And then boom. 
Hulk goes down. And so the Avengers scramble to defeat Ultron for like a minute. And I know what you're thinking. Oh shit, now the next Avengers have to figure out how to take on Ultron alone. They have to figure out how to do this. Like maybe Ultron's weakened. So now they have a chance at defeating Ultron somehow. Uh, but no. You wanna know what actually happens? Pym just goes up to the Hulk and is like, hey yo, pussy, I know you're not taking a break right now. And then the Hulk is just like, oh, oh fuck you, Pym. And he goes Super Saiyan and just kills Ultron in like 30 seconds. <laughs> He defeats Ultron on his own. Like, there is no big team-up battle against Ultron. It's just, it's just Hulk defeats Ultron alone. And Ultron's done. That's it. Like, dude, can we at least have the next Avengers help out something? Maybe the Hulk is doing most of the damage. The other characters have to do something. But they, they really don't, they don't even leave a mark on this guy. And deadass, that's straight up how the main conflict ends. And... Look, the journey was cool, but this part of the ending is kind of weak. And it's not like in the Avengers when Hulk beats up Loki and it's like, hey, he did that essentially to Ultron. But no, Loki in the Avengers by the end is not the main obstacle. The main obstacle in the Avengers at the end is the Shatari invasion and the portal and the nuke. In this movie, Ultron himself is the final obstacle. That's it. It's just Ultron. And this dude just straight up gets beaten up by the Hulk and is ripped in half. And it's like, it's a little underwhelming. But thankfully, we do get a very cool resolution because Ultron will self-repair. And so Torin's like, no, I'm not, no, you're not. Who, Ult Ultron who? I'm so rusty. I haven't made a video in like a month. This is really hard. It is, it is really hard to ad lib. I, I, I haven't like gotten the, I haven't gotten it back yet. I don't think. Anyways, she fucking yeets Ultron into space. She flies out into the atmosphere, throws him, and just, it goes so hard, but she's not invincible. So she starts choking, freezing, and dying. And it's a bummer, but of course, they're not gonna kill her. She meets her dad. And Thor's like warm glow appears. It's so cool. And he's like, daughter. You're so fucking sick. You have done me proud, Turin. And at this moment, I'm feeling very emotional because this is so sweet, but I am having one thought, and that is, where the fuck have you been, bro? You're alive. You let the Earth die, dude? He's like, oh, the Earth, ah, uh, I'm like king though. Like, I kinda ha, I'm like busy. Like, uh, can we like rain check the death of my friends real quick? In my head, like, he just let the Avengers die. Like, he can just buy frost to Earth, right? Am I crazy? Dude, why would you do that? Like, it's an incredibly heartwarming moment. Cause he's like, I want you to learn what it means to be human. Cause humanity is a powerful thing. You learned what it meant to be human. That is why I left you with the Avengers. But at the same time, you left humanity to die. <laughs> Still though, it's a great closer to Torin's journey and it's really sweet. And uh, he guides her back to Earth after she says, yeah, I can't go with you to Asgard because Earth is my home. My home is with my family on Earth. When I was little, I thought this was the sickest shit. Rewatching the movie, it's still the sickest shit. Torin comes back, absolutely dripped out in gold. Fucking head to toe gold, dude. She looks so fucking badass. I thought it was the sickest thing. I still think it's the sickest thing. And we get a really cool ending. Francis Barton is like, yeah, uh, there's still like a bunch of robots in Ultra City that we have to fuck up. And then James says the iconic line. Avengers, assemble! And that's it. The next generation of Avengers is here and they're gonna kick ass. And oh, I forgot to say, Hulk just kind of fucks off with Betty. I'm not joking, like right after the battle, he's just like, Betty, let's get the fuck out of here. And then he just carries Betty and they, they fuck off. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> it's just kind of just like, okay, bye. They're gonna have a, a kid, I guess. That's gonna be next, next event. After watching this movie, what did I think? I still think that Doctor Strange is maybe better than this movie, but that's like debatable. I really, really, really enjoy this movie. This is like very much in the upper levels of the Marvel animated features. Um, and oh, man, it just 
took me back to my childhood, man. Like, I remember as a kid, I wanted like Azari's powers, but I wanted to be like James, but I also had a crush on Torin because like, she's so fucking sick. I remember thinking Ultron was like the big Avengers bad. And he kind of is, he, he kind of is. I was like, dude, I want to see Ultron in like a movie. Like this kind of Ultron, just like so scary and cold. The visual style of this film is one I genuinely really liked. I much prefer it to like the very realistic style of like say the Ultimate Avengers ones. So I really enjoyed this one. And again, I, I feel like I really connected with this one because like I was a kid and I connected because the main characters were kids. Not that only as a kid you can only connect with kid characters, I'm just saying that like it gave that perspective that I was like, oh, this is cool. I just really enjoyed it, man. I thought it was it was it was a good time. It's not perfect at all. It's not like a masterpiece, but it's very solid. All of these movies have been solid so far, and I'm so excited for the next one. Because the next one is genuinely like I remember watching it and my parents were like, that is so violent. <laughs> that is Hulk versus. That's Hulk versus Wolverine and yeah, Hulk versus Thor. And I'm really fucking excited for those. All right, everyone, make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, Brown Table's original animated series. Three episodes are out, and the fourth one is on the way. Thanks so much, Derry Pope, for this art of jazz from the show. She looks absolutely awesome. I just, I love the lighting. I love that she's tinkering like she always does. And yeah, awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thanks so much, patrons, for supporting the channel. Y'all are awesome. And remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to become a chair and sit at the table. Thanks so much for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.